Hello everyone, welcome to the new video on the Tech Quarrel. Flutter just released a new stable version 3.13 with tons of improvements and new features that we are going to explore in today's episode. These improvements and features are divided into 5 parts. Framework improvements and features, performance improvements, platform improvements, dev tool improvements and lastly games new features and improvements. First of all, let's discuss the framework improvements and new features. The first new feature in framework is the character recognition in text field for iOS. Using text field on iOS, the users now will automatically allow to see an option to use the device camera to recognize characters and insert them into the text field. And the second feature is platform adaptive dialog. A new constructor has been added to the alert dialog widget along with the adaptive function called show adaptive dialog to display material or cappuccino dialog depending upon the current platform you're using. And a third feature or improvement is cappuccino dead picker is updated. Flutter team added a new mode month year to the cappuccino dead picker which looks something like this. And the fourth feature in the framework is Check style radio in iOS. A new property has been added to the Copacino radio widget in Flutter. This allows the radio.adaptive and radio list style.adaptive widgets to control whether they use check mark style or a default behavior. And the fifth feature is customization options for material widgets. There are several customization options added for the material widgets that are first using error widget. Now you can customize error widget that is shown for text fields when they are not validated. Next, now you are allowed to add tooltips for segmented buttons. And next, now you're also allowed to add the gap between the expansion panels with material gap size property. And for switch button, you can now customize the track outline width just like this. And also in the navigation drawer, you are now allowed to control the title padding using the property of title padding of the navigation drawer. And also you can align the tabs using the property of alignment from the tab bar widget. And you can also customize the color for chips in different stats. The elevated chips has been added to the material tree that includes the filter chip dot elevated and the choice chip dot elevated and lastly the action chip dot elevated. So that was some customization options for material widgets in the new release Flutter 3.13. And the sixth feature of the framework is on submitted property for the search bar widget. The on submitted property of the search bar widget allows you to specify a function that will be called when the user presses the done button on the keyboard. This function can be used to perform any action you want, such as submitting a search query to a server or opening a new screen. And the seventh feature is app lifecycle listener. The app lifecycle has been added for listening to the changes in the application lifecycle and responding to the request to exit the application. The eighth feature of the framework is two-dimensional scrolling foundation. The Flutter team has released the foundation for building widgets that scroll in two directions. This means that developers can now create the widgets that scroll in both vertical and horizontal directions. And the classes that are available for building such multi-dimensional scrolling are first, child vicinity. This class represents the relative position of a child in two-dimensional scrolling widget. And next, two-dimensional child delicate. This class is similar to the sliver child delicate class, but it is designed for two-dimensional scrolling widgets. And next, two-dimensional scroll view. This class is an abstract class for two-dimensional scrolling widgets. And lastly, render two-dimensional viewport. This class is responsible for laying out the children of two-dimensional scrolling widgets. Flutter team has also added some new interactions for two-dimensional widgets including diagonal scrolling. The ninth feature of the framework is new slivers. Flutter 3.13 brought us new set of slivers for dealing with new scrolling effects that you can see on the screen. The sliver main axis group, this sliver allows you to arrange multiple slivers together in main axis. This can be used to create sticky headers where the header sliver remains visible even as other slivers scroll below it. The sliver cross axis crop. This sliver allows you to arrange multiple slivers together in a cross axis. This can be used to create side by side slivers such as a list of images or grid buttons. And the sliver constraint cross axis is this sliver allows you to specify the amount of space that its child sliver are given in the cross axis. 
This can be used to create a layout where a child's slivers are given different amounts of spells. And the sliver cross axis expanded. This sliver ensures that its child slivers are given the same amount of space in the cross axis. This can be used to create a uniform layout for side by side slivers. And lastly, the decorated sliver is a sliver that allows you to decorate a sliver with a decoration. This can be used to add background, border or any other decoration to sliver. And the 10th feature is the icon button has now the property is selected, which is from accessibility. Let's see how it works. If the icon button is selected property was null, so the icon button will behave as a normal button. But if it's specified and its selected icon is also specified, this will make your app more accessible. But remember, this will only work when you have a use material design true in your material app. I just added random icons here, but you can have your own app selected icon that you select it for. So that was it for the framework. Now let's talk about the performance improvements in Flutter 3.13. Flutter team has made several improvements to the Impaler for improving the performance of apps. Impaler is a rendering engine. It is designed to improve the performance and consistency of Flutter apps. Now let's discuss the performance improvements in iOS in Flutter 3.13. So for iOS, in previous release Flutter 3.10, the Impeller becomes the default rendering engine for iOS. And now in 3.13, they improve it much more. In other words, the Impeller on iOS is now much faster and more efficient than it was before. This means that the Flutter apps on iOS will be able to run smoothly and responsively, especially when animating or displaying complex graphics. So there are some specific improvements that have been made to Impeller on iOS in Flutter 3.13. First, the shader compilation has been eliminated, which means that there is no delay when rendering complex graphics and the average frame of rasterization time has been reduced by 50%. The average frame rasterization is average amount of time it takes to render a single frame. This means that the Impaler can now render more frames in less time and improving the performance of the apps. Now let's talk about the fidelity improvements. In Flutter 3.10, in the previous release, Flutter announces the white gamut colors. The wide gamut colors are the type of color spaces that has a wide range of colors as compared to the normal RBG colors. This means that they can display more accurate and vibrant colors especially for images and videos. These colors were available in previous version under a flag using Impeller rendering engine. Now in 3.13, Flutter team decided to make wide gamut colors the default on iOS when using Impeller. Next, performance improvement on Android. Flutter team is still working on the Vulkan backend for Android. Vulkan backend is a software layer that allows Flutter to use the Vulkan graphics API on Android devices. The Vulkan API is designed to be more efficient and flexible than the older OpenGL APIs. The average frame rasterization times for Android is significantly improved and they're still working on improving the performance of Impeller on Android and they hope to release the preview later in this year. Now let's talk about the platform improvements in Flutter 3.13 release. In Android, Flutter now supports targeting Android 14 or API 34. But they're still working on some other features on Android 14, such as they said the predicate back navigation. This is a new feature. This will allow developers to specify a predicate or a condition that must be met in order for allowing back navigation. For example, a developer could specify a predicate to allow for back navigation if user has made changes to the form field. This will prevent the user from accidentally navigating back without saving their changes. Predicate navigation back feature is still under development, but this is a promising feature that could improve the usability of Flutter apps. And this feature will be released at later versions of Flutter. And in platform iOS, there were some distortion issues when screen rotates, but now it's fixed in this new version of Flutter 3.13. One more thing that you can do in iOS is now you can rename your workspace or project so you don't end up with a list of runners in your iOS directory in your Flutter app. And the last thing on iOS platform is the iOS 17 and Xcode 15 are the latest major versions of Apple mobile operating system and development tools and they're scheduled to be released in the September 2023. 
and Flutter 3.13 is the latest version of Flutter and if you want to develop app for iOS 17 so you have to update your Flutter to 3.13 latest version. This is because the Flutter 3.13 latest version has some features and APIs that are available on iOS 17. So that was some platform changes in Flutter 3.13 latest release of Flutter. Now let's talk about the improvements of DevTools. There are also some improvements in DevTools in Flutter 3.13 latest release. They added a new overflow menu on the navigation bar to handle the cases when the list of tabs can't be displayed at once. Like by clicking that arrow, you can now open new tabs that were not displayed. In DevTools, they also added the class Legion, which helps in tracing the memory allocations. And few other updates you can see in the release notes, I will give the link in the video description. And lastly, the game's improvements. Flutter Teams has also made so many improvements in their gaming toolkit. So if you are a Flutter game developer, so you can check out more about the game improvements, I will give the link in the video description. That's all. For more info, head on over to flutter.dev slash release slash release notes.